Yes, all right, we've still got some energy left. Good, this is it, baby, the coveted 12.05 set. <laughs> Absolutely ideal. Always wanted to do a seven minute set at midnight in a sort of WWE Hell in a Cell cage. <laughs> And what looks like a primary school assembly hall. So, should be pretty neat, guys. Uh, my name's Stuart, but that doesn't matter because you'll call me Steve at the end anyway. Nice to meet you all. Um, I am a local man. I, I work in Edinburgh. I just got a new job this year in Edinburgh. And it was a big step for me because it's the first time I've actually had a job that's relevant to my degree. I, I studied English, uh, like a fucking idiot. Uh, graduated four years ago in a big hall with a cloak on. Like loads of stuff was gonna happen, and then fuck all. And then finally, this year in Edinburgh, first job relevant to my degree. <laughs> Cloak back on, working in a Harry Potter themed escape room. <laughs> Is it relevant or not? It's a fucking book. <laughs> I've not read it, still counts. If you'd have told me four years ago my daily life would still involved pretending to have read books I've not read, I'd have spat on your face. But here we are. Harry Potter themed, by the way, it's not official, I have to say that. <laughs> we don't have the rights to it. Everyone's like a dodgy Littles version of the real thing. We have to call Voldemort he who must not be named for copyright reasons. <laughs> it's not even the shittest job I've had, man. That's before this, I'll just tell you in plain English, you don't have time to fuck about tonight. My last job, I stood in Glasgow Central train station selling baked potatoes out of a shed. And yeah, there's no joke there, but a few of you are taking a free laugh. That's on the house, enjoy that. It was a stupid thing. It was called the Potato Shed, because why fucking not? It was named by the same guy who named the Walkie Talkie. And I used to have to stand there for six months. Shut after six months. Did you need that information? So because it turns out, who wants a tatty on a train? No one. Who knew? Yeah. Just dying from day one in this business. My life for six months was just making lattes while potatoes burned next to me. <laughs> That was it, wearing a t-shirt with the words Field Good Food written on it. <laughs> yeah, how does that piece of wordplay make you feel? <laughs> Makes me feel sick, and I knew I was going to say it. It's awful. It's failed from day one, like I said. So they got this business guru from down south to come up, try and fix it, make it a success. Sort of Ramsay's Potato Nightmares style. Which is great for me, because that's my favourite TV show, Kitchen Nightmares. If you've not seen it, long story short, Gordon Ramsay goes to failing restaurants and just sort of shouts at them <laughs> until they become a success. <laughs> and it's called a nightmare, but he fucking loves it. Getting to go out the hard man. It should be called Ramsey's Wet Dreams. <laughs> you say, it's not a nightmare, man, you love it. Every episode's the same as well. It's almost like a family-run business, and the problem's not really the food, it's that the family all hate each other. <laughs> it's basically Jeremy Kyle with scallops. <laughs> that program, every episode's the same. Every solution's the same every week, they just swap in a different American, Italian-American family, that's all they do. Every episode's the same, it's always like, the mum's walked out on the dad, the brothers won't talk to each other. How are you going to fix it, Gordon? I'm going to get rid of the tablecloths to make the menu smaller. <laughs> nice one, we need to get divorced now the menu's smaller. So we got our pound shop, Ramsey came up trying to fix the place, make it a success. It didn't work, spoiler alert, obviously. His big idea is we had to upsell. Right? Fairly standard business, business procedure. People come in, you've got to try and make them spend more money, get them with impulse purchases. That makes sense, in theory. Let's not lose sight of the fact, though, I'm selling fucking baked potatoes. That famous impulse buy. <laughs> Do you want a baked potato? I didn't, to be honest, but now you've mentioned it, sure, why not? It had a 0% success rate. It was a piece of shit. It failed within six months. And honestly, Every single day of my life there, uh, all I had to do was say sorry for how expensive the potatoes were. <laughs> Every day. I don't know if you've ever tried to explain to a Scottish man over the age of 50 that a baked potato was going to cost him more than a fiver. You've got your work cut out, man. Yeah. It's not easy. I know no one likes being ripped off, but specifically Scottish men over the age of 50. My dad's this way. His dad was that way. I welcome it myself. Every day they'd come up, we'd have this little role play. They'd come up, absolutely zero intention of buying anything but with a few grievances to air. They come up, point at the menu, over a fiver for a baked potato! I could buy a bag of potatoes for a quid! Good to that, good luck buying an oven for less than four pounds. <laughs> In this part of Central Station. Get your bag of potatoes, your oven, before you know it, you've got your own rival failing potato business. That's not what anyone needs, needs man. And uh, worst part of it, right, because it was in Central Station, they took security really seriously, right, which you know, fair enough. 
got no problem with that really. But I got paid seven pounds, five pence an hour in that job. And part of my job description was terrorism prevention. <laughs> I'm gonna repeat that tonight because you're all fucking asleep. I got paid seven pounds, five pence an hour. And part of my job was to defeat ISIS. <laughs> So I mean, heaven forbid anything should happen, just be rest assured, they have their best man on the job. God damn did I feel incentivized to go above and beyond the Call of Duty. Had to look out for suspicious activity, whatever that means. My first day was like, I've seen some people that actually are happy to pay over a fiver. It seems pretty suspicious to me. Didn't really see anything suspicious. I smelled smoke once, but that was just a Maris pipe with a guy out of hand. <laughs> I'll wait, sure. It's fucking midnight. <laughs> Yeah, man. I kind of miss it in a way, that job, you know. That sense of purpose. Dishing up spots, saving lives. I miss that, man. <laughs> the Potter Place, it's not got the same level of jeopardy, you know. You just sort of ruin some Asian tourists day out. It's not the same, man. At the potato shed, we had to look out for terrorists on the hour, every hour. They were very precise about that. I had a clipboard I had to mark off. Now, I don't know if we've got any terrorists in our midst this evening, but my advice would be, do it about quarter past. <laughs> I was mainly dealing in potatoes at that point. You'd have got away with anything, our backs were turned. The smell of them burning would probably cover your tracks, if anything. That was it, man. On the air every hour. So 59 minutes of every hour, I'm just serving coffees and shit. One minute of every hour, the, the face of counter-terrorism in the UK. A man in a shed in a train station, armed with a clipboard. ISIS must have been shitting themselves, man. <laughs> Had to mark up at like 2 p.m. No terrorists. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Keep that. I want to see more of that at three. <laughs> and 59 minutes of coffees, and then 3 p.m. <laughs> Absolutely smashing us today, lads. Uh, no terrorists. They didn't tell me what I was supposed to do if I did see a fucking terrorist, by the way. They left that out in my briefing. Presumably, I'm just supposed to show them the clipboard. But so, so, sorry to make you feel bad, bro. You're not meant to be here. Jack can ask the boss, do you want a fucking baked potato? All right, guys, that is as much fun as I thought it was going to be at midnight. Uh, won't lie to you. Uh, you've been very nice. Uh, good luck to the eventual winner. I've been Stuart or Steve, whatever you'd like. Enjoy your lives. Take care. Thank you.